Welcome back to the Super Not Funny Show Reviews. And today I'll be reviewing Foundation Season 2, Episode 2. It's entitled A Glimpse of Darkness. It's coming to you from Apple TV+. Plus. So, what I think about it, and should you be watching? Before we get into the review, get down there, hit like on this video. Episode 2 of Foundation uh, is, I feel, it's pretty pivotal so pivotal that they decided to like kind of have three three and a half four different plot lines that that i think are going to follow through to the end of this season and it's really is all about um in, in a way coming back to some of the themes of the books because i like i say they stray a bit uh but bringing forward among other things the second foundation and telegraphing a distant future really really huge enemy of the foundation uh in the form of the mule and also you know you know keeping up with what's going on uh with the empire and you know finally uh to show what the foundation's been doing in the outer reach as far as uh trying to take or exert some control over the you know the planets out there and what's actually bringing to uh, you know, them to the attention of the dying empire. So uh, all of that is like, and there's interpersonal stuff, obviously. So uh, we uh, last saw that Harry Seldon had gotten out of, uh, at least his consciousness had gotten out of, um, you know, the, uh, you know, their little number box that, that tell, you know, the prime radiant and, was confronting Gail Dornick and we find out he actually he'd, he'd been trapped for, you know, over the hundred and, you know, 76 years had been awake the whole time, kind of been tortured of not being able to like just die or go to sleep or whatever. Uh, but you know, all that has to wait because they got to get the hell off of Synax before this hurricane basically grounds them permanently. And uh, there's a cool little action scene. I, I think I, I really like Salvor Hardin as because she's a warden, and so therefore you know she's more of a an action oriented person, very you know decisive. And we get to see you know basically her trying to save the ship and get it in into the air. A nice little and I I assume expensive water scene that they they filmed. Uh, and that also then you know once they're they're in the air they're in space it's time to you know figure out you know, what the actual beef between Harden and, and Dornick is, and, you know, Gail Dornick is, and, and we've not Harden, uh, between, uh, Harry and, uh, Gail Dornick. And it's basically, as we I said before, her, you know, going into space rather than Rach means she's not where she's supposed to be in terms of the plan leading the, the foundation. The, the whole plan is in, is in jeopardy, is in a, on a branch that could fail at many, many points. And they're at a crisis point, and, and now they've got to figure out how to get everything back on, on uh, track. And that leads Harry to explain about the second foundation and that Gail knew about it and didn't approve of it. And now they seem like the second foundation may be the only, um, the, the only option. And... Um, they have been hinting at psychic powers and, and within the foundation books there, that's a thing. It's actually something that's important. And therefore, uh, but you know, in the foundation books, the foundation, second foundation already exists. And this one, they have to, they've got to figure out how to, you know, make it happen. Cause it's the only thing that can save the, the plan. But we don't know that until, you know, Gail basically using her limited, she has some limited psychic ability and a salvor, her limited psychic ability in concert to see basically in her consciousness in the future why they need you know why they need the second foundation and where to find them and that's where the mule comes in uh which i have say i don't know if I've, I've you know thought about the the books for years and i never really had in mind what the mule actually looked like i always assumed that the mule was you know, I guess a dwarf or something like that. The way they sort of explain it, that he was a court jester or something. It's just something weird. I just, but no, it's a guy, a guy, formidable guy, and ex apparently quite psychic to the point of being able to see that not only was the Gail Dornick in the future uh, know to be able to read her mind, but also to note that 
a younger version of herself existed in the past, you know, exists in the past and was reading through, you know, through her consciousness. Very, it was a very cool little bit, and I liked it quite a bit. And and they gave out a name, Hover Mallow, who again in the books is a, is a big character. And so I'm I'm interested in seeing like this whole second foundation and the mule and all the you know kind of telegraphing the mule and Hover Mallow, who's apparently you know supposed to be important, uh, which actually you know that revelation uh, you know brings us to um, what the foundation itself is doing, which is preparing for this new crisis point. Um, and we get to see kind of the I guess you call it the the religious arm that's pushing the the great the galactic spirit uh, using technology to sort of um, infiltrate these so-called barbarous worlds that used to be under the empire no longer are and need the medicine and technology and influence of the foundation and the foundation wants to shore up that influence to basically keep themselves safe and to safeguard the future of humanity and we see uh, you know in this uh, world a couple of the priests basically being you know nearly run off until they use their technology to sort of you know lay lay the foundation for a, you know a future church or something like that um, and it's it's all smoke and mirrors and, and stuff but to people who are insufficiently intelligent or or just don't know how things work it, it seems like magic and that there's a galactic spirit very fun and very fun and interesting stuff and it's uh, featuring an actor that i hadn't seen in a while uh, in one of my favorite movies uh, uh, called Blinded by the Light. So um, they're recalled back to Terminus and, you know, the the people on the foundation, they're ready for this this whole thing. And we find out that, um, you know, the crisis point, the, the opening of the vault, it's the second time in 136 years, something like that. And that, in fact, uh, this head priest, the head of the, you know, the whole uh, religious order, has in fact was in fact the young boy we saw last season who witnessed Selden coming out the first time. I thought it was a cool comeback, uh, a callback, and also showing that the people in the foundation are advanced enough that they can have long, long lives. Uh, but it ends with the death of a warden and also the um, you know the the vault saying, "Bring me Hober Mallow." So I'm very, I'm curious who that, I know who he is in the book. Who is this person? Have we seen him yet? And where can we find them? I suspect, because if I remember correctly, he is a merchant prince and they are, they're, they're, um, hinting at the, the fact that there are actually two arms of the foundation at work in the outer reach, trying to, you know, expand the foundation's influence. And one of them is the priesthood, uh, using, they're using a uh, religion to spread foundation uh, influence, but also there are the the merchant princes who are using commerce uh, to spread the foundation's uh, re, uh, influence around. So I, I'll be interested to see him because Hover Mallow is uh, Mallow is qu- quite capable. Um, so that also leaves us at uh, the Empire. What are they up to? The Empire is essentially uh, trying to. Well, we have a. Uh, you know, Cleon, who is trying to bust out of the, the genetic, you know, lineage and to get a wife. And so we get to see who this potential wife is, uh, who, who she is and what she's up to. And she's, you know, she understands that, you know, perhaps the, the empire is still quite strong, but it is diminishing. And she's concerned rightly about, you know, clones and what does it mean for her kids and, and what does it mean for brother, uh, you know, Dawn and brother Dusk and what's up with Demerzel? She's asking all the right, right questions and it's kind of proving, I think, to be maybe more formidable, I think, than Cleon understands who thinks he's getting, who's thinking he's, he's marrying, uh, he's marrying, I don't want to say down, but he's marrying to strengthen the line, but could be. Uh, introducing a snake into its midst. I, I wonder. She says she's a dilettante. I'm not sure if that's entirely true, uh, but it is it is interesting that they show more show her the you know cloning facilities and all that stuff, and perhaps gives her information that he doesn't know he doesn't want her to have. And so, like uh, at the, at the end of all of this, 
you you know we're we're at a point where who is Hober Mallow? Where is he? And because uh, apparently he's the key to defeating the Empire, and at the same time, uh, they are mentioning a guy named Bell Rios, who also on the on the Empire side could be lead to the destruction of of the Foundation because he's apparently a brilliant tactical mind, even if you know Cleon himself doesn't really trust him. So I'm very interested to see what the, where this goes in the next episode. Uh, this is playing out closer to the books than I than the the first season, but definitely there's a lot of uh, you know you know different takes on things, and there there are uh, some you know turning left or turning right where I expect them to keep going straight. So I'm especially with the Salvor Hard and Gail Dornick that whole thing. It's clear that they are going to cryo sleep through you know season to season. Uh, as each crisis unfolds, so I'll be interested to see how how they uh, how they go about finding the the key people. And this war coming up is going to be pretty pretty crazy. So uh, anyway, that's my thoughts on this episode. What do you guys think about it? What do you think about what I had to say? Get down to the comment section, leave your thoughts there, and of course you can always hit me up super not funny show at gmail dot com or at super not funny s one on Twitter. And while you're down there, do me a favor, hit like on this video, subscribe to the channel. And hit that notification bell. All that good stuff helps uh, with the algorithm so that more people see this video, uh, these videos and see this channel. All right, thanks for joining me. Come back next week. We're going to be talking about the third episode of uh, Foundation Season 2. Until then, I've been Mo, your comment extraordinaire on all things pop culture. And I'll see you guys on the other side of the thread. Peace.